I'm back to finish up four aspects every Christian kid needs. We have way too many kids leaving our churches in their teen and college years. Latest stat I saw was only 6% hold on. That's 94% failure rate on us. That's really how it is. So um, many of you are saying, okay, what? how does our ministry really change things? They're with their families so much more. They're with their schools so much more. And we have such a minimal impact in their life because of their minimal time engagement with us. There are real things that you can do as a ministry to keep that from happening. No matter if you're in children's ministry, youth ministry, college ministry, even adult ministry has an impact on the life of your youngers. What is it? What does it look like? It's experiencing God in real ways. That's the fourth aspect that you have to have. And you're like, oh, what do you mean by that? Well, if I was to give your kids the choice of a stuffed animal, stuffed dog, or a real dog, where what would happen? The excitement level would go through the roof. It's a real puppy. Oh, my word. Oh, look, it's so cute. Would they be playing with that stuffed animal at all? No, they would forget that it was even an option. Even if you gave them both at the same time, what that stuffed animal most likely is going to lay by the wayside out of thought, out of concern, not appealing at all because they have what is real right in front of them. For your older kids, let's do money. You're going to play money versus real money. If you give them the option, Hey, do you want a hundred uh, dollars play money or do you want a hundred dollars uh, real money? They are going to find 5 million ways to spend that hundred dollars in the next 15 seconds and then be stuck deliberating how they're going to spend it. Or for those of you who have super savers, they are ecstatic because that's going to push them higher in their savings account, investment accounts, in their jars, their piggy banks, whatever it might be. Oh, don't get me started on saving and investing on at a young age. It's ridiculous, but we're not talking about that today. Experiencing God is the same way. If if the things that the world can offer are way outmatched by the reality and the power and the authority and the goodness of God, they're not going to be tempted. They're going to know what is real. It's like sinking your teeth into a real apple and sinking your teeth into a waxed apple that sits on the table and totally messes with you. Not that I know from experience, but sinking your teeth into a waxed apple is totally deflating. Unless maybe that's all you ever knew. And so you thought, hey, this waxed apple, that's an apple. That's what, that's what we have. Until they encounter what's real and all of a sudden, mind blown, right? So how can we build our services around really encountering God? It's going to take thinking differently. It's going to take really choosing to set that goal. It's going to shake up everything. And you know what? That's okay, because our current everything has a 94% failure rate. So it's time to start looking at doing something different. Yes, crafts are fun. Snacks are fun. Um, hangout times with the youth are fun and, and, and needed. I'm not saying scrap everything, but having a perspective or a reason behind those things of not just entertaining or sidetracking or um, keeping them busy so that the adults can have the real ministry. That's what's producing the 94% failure rate. Instead, we need to segment out a chunk of our time for teaching kids how to encounter God how to invite them into their everyday lives. 
how they can hear God for themselves, how they can invite the Holy Spirit to speak to them for themselves and hear his voice and be able to move opportunities to practice speaking in tongues, practice laying hands on the sick, practice all the things that God says he wants to be through us. And then we're like, yeah, God's so powerful. He can do that through us. Let's give him opportunities to practice doing it. Why not? You're like, what if they bail? What if it doesn't work in my children's ministry? Then keep training. Keep teaching on real things that will equip them for growth and encourage them to try again. Just like you want people to do for you as a children's pastor, they don't want you to, or a youth pastor, college pastor, you mess up once, you don't want to hear them say, you're out, you're not perfect the first time you tried to do something. We can't have that here. You're gone. They don't, no one does that in any really segment of life that I'm aware of. Um, in sports, no one makes it 100% of the time. And yet they're still celebrated. In, in investing, because I just mentioned that, the big wig investors aren't even close to hitting it every time. They're at like a 50% accuracy rate and celebrate it. We're like, hey, 50%, that's huge. So why in the world would we put the pressure on those God has entrusted with us with that right off the bat, they have to be at 100%? They're going to miss it. We're going to miss it. And we need to allow people the freedom to grow. So how can you schedule out time for kids to actually experience God? This is also a fantastic time where you can also open up your, um, your, I almost call them sessions, your services for others in the church to come in and speak into your kids' lives, your youth lives, your college kids' lives. Bring it. Why not? Why not bring somebody in who's the, the head of the ministry teams, the the lead uh, worshiper in the adult sanctuary or the in the youth sanctuary for if you're in kids from the next level up so that the kids get to experience worshiping with them and not just worshiping so that they're familiar with the person and they know some of the tunes. So when they graduate up, if everything's not um, foreign to them, that is a real thing. We do need to do that. But. I want to invite these people in so that they can encounter God in ways that I haven't or uh, I don't know how to lead someone into that. I love worship. Personally, I love worship. Leading other people to be amazing worshipers. I don't know. I don't have that gift. And so what do I do? I look for people that do have that gift and I invite them in. Sometimes that's meant flying people in from across country because I know they have what my kids need right now. And, and my kids are going to grow from someone that's different than me. We've done that for every single youth camp, kids camp that we've led, that we never have our own team build it. Why? Because they hear from our own team all the time. And so I want them to pull from someone who doesn't look like us, doesn't talk like us, and moves in a different spiritual gift then we carry. I mean, it's the fivefold ministry that in Ephesians chapter four, that God says will equip the saints for the works of the ministry. So why would we think that we should have everybody in our congregation only pull from one? That's kind of silly. Now you may be the best one in the entire region at that one thing. But if evangelism is is you, who you are, then you got to bring in the other four. If you're an amazing pastor, the best pastor, you need to help your kids encounter the other four. So go outside of your bubble, invite someone in, invite, even if it's within the congregation or maybe outside of the congregation, your kids need to experience God and then carve out time every service where they're learning how to pray, learning how to hear God's voice, learning how to live the way 
he wants us to. Letting him flow through and the kids get to experience God in real ways. It is so worth it. Might be uncomfortable at first. Might feel weird at first. You may even have some team members say, this isn't how we do things. It's okay. Push through. Because we have to change this for our kids. A 94% failure rate is not okay. So put the time in. Put the effort in. Put the struggle in for growth. And you are going to see spiritual maturity like never before in your teams and in those that God has entrusted you with. All right, that's it for me. Next week, I'm going to be asking or answering some common questions that we hear in the church that I actually find kind of comical when you step back and look at them from eternity. You look at them from God's viewpoint It's going to be a fun time. So join me next week. But as for right now, I got to let you go. If you want to sponsor Root Bible for what we're doing and get more teachings like this out to more people, we would love it. Check out the link in the description. Also, Pastor Kate and I and our team, we actually travel and lead camps and teach camps or do conference weekends, that kind of thing. And so if you are looking for something like that for this summer or or what, whenever, then let us know. You can contact us through the Root of Revival uh, webpage. All right, well, that's it for me. I will see you all next week.